Johan for inviting me today to talk, talk to you about how realistic medicine has influenced me. So I'm going to start with this group of very happy, smiling people, and many of whom are sitting down in the front row um, here today. So I get the pleasure of spending two hours a month with these lovely people, and more importantly, these individuals um, give up their time and volunteer to be part of our group. And so I'd like to say a very big thank you to you for the commitment over the years. Some of these individuals have been working with us for the last for, since 2014. So we meet every month and we spend the first half of the meeting talking about um, and educating the, the group, upskilling them around medicines. So we might talk about what is a medicines formulary, what is the role of SMC. And then the second part of the meeting is where we're working meeting, where we have clinical areas coming to speak to the group try and co-produce medicine developments and medicine initiatives um, together with the group. So we work with a partnership. So we see this group as our expert public group to co-produce some medicine developments together. Two of our members, Fran and Sue, sit on the Area of Drug and Therapeutics Committee, which is our medicine governance committee for NHSG side. So as a group, we try and support these individuals to be able to add value at these meetings and in their work so that it's not a tick box. Exercise. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the journey where we started to engage with patients in the public around medicines. So this dates back to 2013 where we organised a medicine safety, um, medicine safety awareness week um, where it was uh, targeting staff but also targeting patients and the public. And what we found that what mattered to the public was that they wanted somebody that they could talk to about their medicines somebody that they could ask questions and know what problems to watch for. So with the, with the help of the group, uh, and you'll see Jim, he's still a, a member of our group since 2013, we designed a list of questions to try and empower patients to gain knowledge about their medicines. And we co-produced this card and designed it as a not sure, just ask card. Um, and what we found during the week was that people were feeding back to us to say this is giving them permission to ask. It's an opportunity to engage with a health or social care professional around the medicines. They also said they didn't know what questions to ask. So this acted as a tool and as a prompt for them to seek that, the right information. So quickly this card became um, taken up nationally um, by healthcare group in Scotland. Still, it's still used in community pharmacies and in GP practices today. So what does the group do now after five years we've been working together? Well, not just locally, but also nationally. We have healthcare groups in Scotland and the Scottish Patient Safety Programme coming to use our group to co-produce materials together and also to get our public members to engage in the, the wider Scottish uh, health boards by participating in WebExes around medicines. And they've also used Fran, who you'll be hearing from next, um, in conferences as a presenter and as a delegate, just like we're doing uh, today. Our um, group have been involved in testing out the Polypharmacy app before it was launched. This is a, a shared decision making tool um, which can be used by members of the public. So they were, they were able to feed back and um, value the feedback that's used before it, before it's available to the general public. All our materials and all our educational presentations are available to any member of the public to look at online. But we also use things like social media to be able to communicate certain messages through video, patient scenarios, etc. to engage with members of the public. But ultimately, our meetings, there's a real thread of the conversation that runs through um, and it's in relation to the realistic medicines principles. So we designed this poster as a group be realistic about your medicines. This really encompassed all the themes we've been talking about over the last five years. And these were what, what the public can do to reduce waste around the medicines, what the public and patients can do to reduce harm caused by them and start a conversation about around shared decision making and get people thinking about the benefits of them caused by their medicines. I was really reassured to hear the top three recommendations which were at the system's duty last year in Perth, which was giving patients the right to ask 
telling them they have a right to ask their questions and what questions to ask. It's really echoed all the sort of themes of the discussions we've been having over the last five years. But also, they were input around what it feels like to be on the receiving end of that and how better training would help assist for health and social care uh, professionals. And advocacy was another theme of the discussion when, when Shoban joined our group once uh, recently. He, uh, really, advocacy came out as part of that discussion that in order for people to make an informed choice, they really needed that help from somebody independently. This is a great tool for encouraging patient empowerment. And this is giving patients their permission to stop a medicine if they're ill and maybe dehydrated. And maybe, maybe on a couple of medicines that might impact and cause harm to their kidneys. This is to avoiding what we call as a triple whammy. This is a difficult thing for people to do, to actually take that action. And so we would recognise that a verbal conversation is needed also to help support people to, to take action around some of these things. So I'm going to talk about Margaret. Um, so Margaret is a 73 year old independent lady. Last year, she was admitted to hospital with groin pain getting progressively worse. And she had a diagnosis of cleaning septic arthritis. So her past medical history, she had high blood pressure, she's had a previous heart attack. So she was on quite a long list of medicines already, so she when she was admitted to hospital. So the treatment for her pain was that they started and she was started on an anti-inflammatory drug, quite a strong anti-inflammatory drug called Naproxen. And after only three doses, she developed an acute kidney injury, required 10 days of dialysis treatment, and ended up in hospital for 90 days. So Margaret is my mum, and this is a picture of her looking at her very worst um, receiving dialysis treatment. But the point of this story is that my mum knew she couldn't take an anti-inflammatory drug because that stopped after she had a heart attack. But she didn't think to question or even inquire about that. So this is why I'm passionate both personally and professionally as a pharmacist, as a prescriber in the outpatients or in the ward, and as a lecturer on the non-medical prescribing course. We want to work out ways we can upskill the general public to become confident in shared decision making about the benefits in all healthcare settings. So I'm going to um, just describe some of the journey, some of the group we have been on within our patient and public forum. And uh, this is Fran back in 2014. She's been to our first meeting. We've been talking about the role of SMC. And she came back to the second meeting so excited. So it had to cause the TV. She had to explain to her husband what Holly is when she was listening to BBC News. Now, that, that is just great for members of the public after one new time to be so excited about something quite complex. And today, um, and the members of the group have, have said they echo Fran's words in saying that she's an active, active <coughs> member of the group, constantly learning, feeling involved, feeling valued, and fully appreciated. So all members of the, of the group have been in quite, quite a journey over the last five years. So please do come and speak to the members of the group. We've got a poster outside in the foyer. And um, we co-produced this poster at one of our last meetings. We all sat down around the PC and we co-produced it together. So thank you for doing that with me. So we're always looking for new members of the group. So if there's any, any public members out there, or anybody else would like to be interested in joining the group, please do come and speak to me. Um, because if you're interested in upskilling yourself, both personally, but also professionally about medicines, then it's a good opportunity, so please do get in contact. Thank you very much for listening.